Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Anime Theory, where we were forced to make a part two because this anime is just way too complex. Like, seriously, it's kind of ridiculous. Also, it's Spookember. Kind of a dumb name, I know. I'd explain what it is, but you probably already know just from the name, honestly. There's going to be a lot of spooky stuff, so I hope you're hyped. And this series is pretty creepy and unnerving, so I think it fits pretty well. Anyways, this is obviously the second part, so if you haven't watched the first one, I'd recommend you go do that. Also, obviously this video will contain spoilers to Serial Experiments Lane. The link to the first episode will be provided in the description, but you've been warned. So, let me just say this. Dude, this series is ridiculous. Even after pouring through it, there's still a small couple aspects that I can't even confirm 100%. It's pretty ridiculous, but man, do I love it. Seriously, this kind of stuff is my bread and butter. Not everybody loves analyzing this kind of anime. Heck, looking at my comment section, it seems that most people didn't even want to watch through it because it's confusing and trippy. And because of that, I'm going to make this for those people who are troubled. Whether you're a lane veteran or a newbie, I'm going to give you the final answer about what's going on in Serial Experiments Lane. Let's stop with the intro and dig right in. So when we left off, there were suddenly more lanes popping up throughout the world. I mean, we had Lane, Lane of the Wired, and now we have this evil lane popping up. Why are there so many lanes? I mean, in this scene, Lane's friend Alice is, well, she's having some interesting thoughts about her and her teacher. Uh, hey, I won't judge. I mean, my wife who's Megane, and she's a teacher, so we're pretty much in the same boat there, Alice. Anyways, this lane, the one with the face I wouldn't want to see in the back alley, has apparently been the cause of this leaking of her special fantasies with her teacher. Now, I think it's debatable about whether this is Lane or something created by the Knights, but regardless, the information is leaked out. Unsurprisingly though, Alice isn't too thrilled about the situation. So, being the good friend that this Lane is, she deletes the entire event from the entire world. Yeah, you heard me right. She deleted the entire thing from existence, with only Alice being able to remember. Poof, and it's gone. Kinda crazy. By this point, with all the extra lanes and the world bending powers, it should become a bit obvious that something's off about Lane. I mean, before this, she was just one separate internet identity, but now there are even more of them. They now seem to be separating and becoming separate entities from Lane, and she's literally bending the laws of reality. It's made clear by this point that Lane has some kind of deeper connection, not only to the Wired, but the world itself. Almost like she's some sort of god. Hmm. After this, the next episode seems to focus a large amount on the creation of the Wired itself. Now, I'm gonna say this, most of this seems to be useless information that has very little connection to the main story, and serves only to integrate several different conspiracies like the Roswell incident with the Wired. What is important, though, is a man by the name of Masami Airi. He is mentioned to have some kind of connection to the Wired, but mysteriously ends up killing himself. Huh, that's kind of familiar. Why? Well, I'll expand on it more a bit later, but for now I will say that he was trying to become one completely with the Wired. After receiving a chip, Lane pulls the kid Taro over to her house. After threatening him with the music from Siberia, which seems to have some kind of connection with the Wired, he admits that this chip, if used, would have messed up her memories. It was made by the Knights to attempt to mess with Lane in some way. In what way and for what reason? Well, I guess you just need to wait a little bit longer. Suddenly, you're met with a man with the appearance of what I can only describe as Metaton if he really let himself go. This creepy man is actually the previously mentioned Masami Airi, who begins talking to Lane about how she no longer needs her body because she can connect to the Wired. Now, just who is this guy? I mean, what is his importance? Well, he claims to be the god of the Wired, but let me tell you, distrust every single thing this guy says. Despite what he says, he isn't the real god. He's just a guy who's trying to make people believe he's the god. By the way, remember those knights? Well, now I can finally tell you who they are. In essence, the knights are followers of this false god. They are his worshippers. They seriously believe that this guy is somehow in complete control of the Wired, and so they follow this guy blindly. Now trust me, he has some pretty crazy abilities in the Wired, but he is by no means the god. 
Ironically enough, after this, however, Lane kills off all of the knights right away, getting rid of every follower he has. So, I guess this weird internet cult is pretty much gone now. Meanwhile, the kid Lane is now realizing more about what's going on. See this family? Well, they're not really her family at all. It was all fabricated lie, and that's why Lane freaked out earlier when she couldn't remember anything about her parents, because, in essence, she never had her parents at all. They were created by someone to fool this version of Lane into believing that she was just a normal kid. Who was it? Well, just like the rest of this, I'm gonna have to tell you that you're gonna have to wait a little bit. I know you're getting sick of it, but I'm sorry. Over the next couple of episodes, the barrier between the wired and the real world begins to become a bit fuzzy. Lane is shown with some ridiculous abilities, but is told by Irie that she is apparently only a software program, and her goal is to destroy the boundary between the real world and the wired. As I said earlier, don't trust a single thing this guy says, since most of the things he says are lies meant to mess with Lane. However, Lane doesn't realize this and believes him, until Alice proves to her that she isn't actually a software program. How does she do this, you ask? She shows her that she has a heartbeat. Yeah, I know, it's a bit cheesy, but if it works, it works. Lane is now realizing that this guy has been spouting a bunch of BS, and even though he tries convincing her otherwise, she quickly destroys him, as she realizes that the true god of the Wired was not him, but Lane. You see, this guy was just trying to get Lane under his thumb the whole time. Remember those emails from Chisa in the first episode? Those were likely sent by the knights under the command of Irie. Remember Evil Lane? Likely created by the knights in order to mess with her mental state even more. Remember the memory erasing chip made by the knights? Yeah, it was likely made so she could be completely under the control of Irie if she used it. The whole time, this guy has been talking to her and trying to force her under his power so he could continue acting like the god of the universe. Obviously, he failed to do that, and Lane is now sure that she is in fact the god of the universe. And with that, Lane deletes herself from everybody's memories, making it so that she technically doesn't exist in the world anymore. The ending of this series is borderline melancholic, honestly. I mean, dying is one thing, but being forgotten and still living has to be one of the most painful existences to have. Lane sacrificed that so the world could be a bit of a better place. It really is kind of a messed up ending. At least she has her fake dad, though. Sadly, I'm unable to determine whether he's actually a higher power than Lane or he's just created by her. It's not all that important, so I'll let you guys decide what you think the dad truly is. Regardless, though, it's a pretty sad ending. Now, you may be asking, what exactly was Lane doing there in the first place? Why was she put into the real world with a family and everything? Well, the person who did it was likely Lane herself. Being connected to the Wired, all of her existence, Lane likely wanted to see what life was like without the Wired being connected to her. I mean, think about it. Why was she created so shy and docile, unable to communicate with even normal people well, much less use the Wired? It was done on purpose. Lane wanted to feel what it was like to be unconnected, unsheathed from her hilt as it were. She gave herself a fake family and tried living a normal life, but as the series shows, that becomes completely impossible. Even with their circumstances, she still begins to connect to the Wired. Regardless of what she would have done, she would have reconnected with it. That's why there were so many lanes by the end of the series. What started as an online persona turned into many with differing traits and personalities that began to eventually disconnect from her. They weren't Lane anymore, but they were a piece of Lane, a personality that she began to have less and less power over. So, despite all of her efforts, she was completely unable to stop this from happening, and she only managed to cause more problems for the other people. Some of them literally died because of her. So, she reset everything and decided to erase that existence that she had created. She needed to accept the fact that she would never be able to escape the Wired. The funniest part is that this is scarily symbolic of how life is now. Think about it, aren't we all connected by the internet? 
I mean, disregarding the fact that you're actually watching this so you're connected to the internet right now, it's almost impossible not to be connected to everyone in some way. Now, with TVs, game devices, the internet, social media, you name it, we are always connected in some way. We know more about each other's personal lives than we ever likely have the right to. Because now, you can read up on whatever someone's doing right on their social media accounts. You can know everything from what their dog's name is to the layout of their house without even knowing who they are at all. We live in a world where getting disconnected from this is borderline impossible. Unless you're Amish or living in the middle of the forest or something, it's likely that you have some kind of technology that connects to the internet. It's an inescapable part of life now. Back when this was made, the internet wasn't nearly as popular, and YouTube and social media didn't really exist. And yet somehow, this show managed to predict what would happen. It goes even farther than that, though. The show likes to make a big deal about how the Wired might actually be the real world. While it may be a bit of an exaggeration, hasn't the internet kind of become the real world for several of you? How much time do you spend on social media, on YouTube, on your phone, on your video game devices, on your TV, watching Netflix, watching Crunchyroll? Seriously, I myself spend most of my day on the computer now. It gets to a point where my life basically is the internet, and that's what this show represents. It's a showcase of what would happen to society once the internet became mainstream. Just like that world, the internet is no longer just a separate thing. The internet is our life now, at least for several people. It's an integral piece of most people's lives on Earth now. And just like the internet, nothing ever is completely gone. There will always be traces of things, regardless of how far you go to delete them. Truly, this show was way ahead of its time. Or at least this is my interpretation of Serial Experiments Lane. Just like most of these types of experiences, there are many ways to interpret it. If you have a different interpretation, that doesn't mean you're wrong or right, it just depends on how the viewer looks at it. And for the people who didn't understand the show or didn't watch it, I hope this video helped at least a bit. I spent a lot of time on these two parts, so I hope it was worth it. For now though, I have a series with quite a lot of corpses to look at. Stay tuned for it, it's sure to make this Spookember extra spooky. Also, hey, I've got more fan art to show off, just like usual. So for the first piece, we've got this awesome tsundere looking art of me, and I keep calling it tsundere because that's what it reminds me of. It kind of looks like if I just turned around and said, oh, it's not like I like you or anything, baka. And so honestly, I really love it. And of course, it's made by Sick Puppy Lol. And dude, it really, really is an amazing drawing. Also, here's me drawn as a Mimikyu. Like, you know, the Pokemon, the murderous one. Yeah, that one. Here's me as that, and dude, it's kind of adorable and kind of terrifying at the same time since I kind of know what that Pokemon is, but at bare minimum, I really like it, and of course, it's made by Sick Puppy Lol, and so I really love it. And hey, if you have any fan art to send me, why don't you send it to me through my Twitter, and I'll show it off in a video. I've still got a pile to show off, but I'll make sure to get to it. Hey everybody, if you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. But I mean, hey, I've got a Twitter account. I mean, you can follow that, and you can see stuff that I post. Sometimes it's funny. And, uh, hey, why don't you check out this awesome cover of the Serial Experiments Lane opening. I know, I've, I show, like, I keep showing off the opening, but it's, like, one of the only pieces of music in the show, and I really like the opening, so, hey, I'll show that off. And next time, I'm not gonna, like, I'm not, you probably know what it is since I said corpses. Uh, I mean, if you can't figure it out, then you probably could just look up the name, it'd probably pop up somewhere, but I'm excited about that. It's gonna be pretty cool. This video was a long video to make, and it took a while to analyze the series, and also, I'm a little later than I would have liked because of freaking school, I had a bunch of stuff this week. And so, I'm sorry this is a little later, but hey, hopefully it was worth the wait. Uh, honestly though, I there's not very- wait, oh, there is one more thing. I am working on a separate channel thing that I will be showing off in the next video in some regards. And so, hey, I hope you're excited about that. And there's not really much else to say besides, see you later.